Go ahead and prepare your heart, your mind, your spirit, your soul, everything that is within you to receive a word on today that is going to break something in you, uh, change something in you. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, um, I can guarantee, <laughs> I can guarantee it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I can guarantee that something is getting ready to happen. Okay, let me go ahead and get started. I wanted to wait a minute to say hello, start saying hello to people so that I could keep on rolling or whatever. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to try my best to stay focused and bring this word out and then say hello and speak uh, to everybody um, at the end or or later. Okay, y'all ready? I was talking about uh, doing some things and changing up some bad habits I had or whatever. So about a year ago, or maybe two, I did a video about the root of the problem, getting to the root of the problem. Um, I want to say it again, getting to the root of the problem. So, you know, I'm going to use my garden this morning. I'm going to use my head this morning, my hair. Um, I was asking the Lord, how come I don't see growth in certain areas? And this was about a couple of years ago. And I was asking him to reveal some things to me and tell me what was stunting my growth, what was stunting my, my process or keeping me from graduating, elevating, what was keeping me from manifesting those things that he caused, said that I would, uh, look, he said that he would cause me to have or make a way for me to have. So um, I've been looking out at this garden and this, you know, thing, and it's been raining quite often, uh, here in North Carolina. And so I went out and I kept looking at it and I said, there's no need of me pulling up what I think is weeds. I'm not really sure if it's weeds. This going to help somebody this morning. Ooh, this going to help somebody. So I said, I'm not really sure if it's weeds cause it's kind of cute. It's growing in a kind of cute way. I don't know if you got anybody in your life that's kind of cute. You know, with being a friend, kind of uh, look like mm -hmm, that they're going to be, uh, you know, all that and, and a bag of chips. I don't know if you have anyone in your life that is appearing to be someone that is helping you to be productive. But when I tell you this morning that you got to make sure that you are leaning and dependent on the wisdom and knowledge that God has given you. So there were these things going out there in this garden. And because Princess, I didn't want to go out there. She wanted to be lazy. Princess wanted to be lazy. I didn't want to deal with that. I was like, well, it ain't ugly. It's cute. It's actually making more greenery in there. This morning when I woke up, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said that those things out there are going to suck the life out of the growth of the real plants. Because I, I was looking and I have... Uh, I have planted some things in honor of some family. Good morning, everybody. I'm trying to stay focused. I have planted some things out there in memory of some of my family members, and it gives me inspiration. I'm going to help somebody this morning. I already know. I already know it. The Holy Spirit spoke to me and said those things out there that are growing in between and in the roots of are going to stunt the growth of the other things and some of those things that are out there that are supposed to be out there are going to be suffocated because you won't go out there and get that mess out of that garden i got up this morning i waited till because it rained a little bit last night god is a present help in the time of trouble okay when he tells you to do something he has provided a way because that makes it easier for me to go out there and get that mess out that out of that garden right okay so uh it was damp out there so as i begin to go uh get my stuff together my gloves and all that to go out there I said, Lord, it's hot out here. My throat already hurting. Um, but mm, I need to speak to somebody this morning. I know that not many people can stay on here long. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take my time. And I'm going to do what God told me to do this morning. Because this is going to help somebody. I said, Lord, this is going to take too much time. I'm supposed to be writing. Uh, I got up this morning. So with all the love, he let me get started with my little writing first or whatever. And as soon as my dog finished eating... I went on outside. I got my gloves together. I got my stuff together. 
Thank you, Holy Spirit. I went out there, and as I began to pull those weeds up, those doggone weeds was all intertwined in the flowers. They, they, they had linked up with some other area in the flowers. They had switched and swooshed and all of that up in now. And I said, well, Lord, have mercy. There are some things in your life that are taken over that don't even belong. There are some things in your life that still look cute and still look like they may be able to operate or whatever, but you got to ask God to help me to remove those things that are keeping me from having the abundant life that you will have me to have. If it is fear intertwining in the midst of my dreams, God, I'm asking you to help me to go out there and snatch that thing up. I'm asking for you to help me this morning, God. And so as I began, I moved on over, moved on over to the next little section. And I noticed that there was some flowers. I was attempting to grow and when I looked down there at it that those things that had grew all wild and willy-nilly had suffocated those babies so that particular flower we're gonna have to wait till another season don't let your blessings be blocked because you don't want to go out there and clean up some stuff don't let your blessings be blocked because you don't want to admit that some people in your life are toxic and that no matter how much you help them they are draining you don't let you look your life be full of complication and discord and confusion because you don't want to cut something off or get rid of something that ain't no good for you in the first place so let's go to this big old round head I got honey I keep wanting to have to grow I keep talking about how grow how grow how grow and the thing that I did not want to do and I know this because I've taken classes honey I had a license in this okay I might have let them expire but I still know what them folks taught me in order for hair to grow that it must the ends must be clipped and there must be a shape about the thing Glory to God. The reason why a lot of people think that their hair is growing or, or has experienced growth in their hair when they have put weave in because there is some kind of growth system in there. There's a pattern in there and the hair is feeding off of the pattern. Okay. But if you don't get them in cuts clipped and get some type of shape to it, to the hair, it's not going to grow. And so a lot of times people will see the length and be talking about, I don't want to cut my ends right now. I just feel like somebody's going to cut all my hair off and blah, 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 whatever. And so the Holy Spirit was speaking to me and saying, the things that you don't want to get rid of is the thing that is causing you from moving forward. There, I told y'all the Holy Ghost was going to help us this morning. The thing that is causing you not to see the manifestation of God is the thing that you don't want to uh, uh, confront. The thing that is causing you not to manifest and see the manifestation of God is some of this stuff that you don't want to get rid of. Some of your old evil ways are keeping you from seeing the goodness of the Lord. Some of your confusion and your foolishness and your anger and your unforgiveness and all of that is keeping you from seeing the manifestation of God in your life from sin. And then the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, just because something is growing up, that don't mean you planted it. That don't mean you planted it. Something was already in that ground before you, you planted this stuff out here. The problem is when you went out there in the first place, you did not clear up the ground. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for the word. You did not clear up stuff. You didn't go in with the mind to clean up. You wanted to take something that was already there and start putting things in there. And so what you ended up with is some blessings and some curses. Because you don't want to address what's already in there. See, some of y'all asking the Lord for husbands and wives, but you don't want to address what's already in your single body. <laughs> what's in your single mind. You don't want to face those things that are inside of that single person that need to be out by the time your husband or your wife come. You want, you want to think that you can carry over some mess into that. Let me tell you something. I used to tell the women that I used to speak with, and I said to the men too, if I have to, um, why would God give you who is a messed up junk to a man that is praying for God to send him a good wife, a good thing? Why would he do that to his son? Why would he give him somebody? Well, hey, look, marriage is not about being cute or fine. That'll get real old real quick, and it probably won't make it to the marriage day. I'm just telling you. It'll probably just make it 
to a certain seasons of your day. But the thing that you don't want to get rid of, the stuff that's not right in you, you don't want to get rid of. You think you can still act nasty and call yourself an evangelist or a minister or whatever and tell people that's just how you are. That's like whatever. No, 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 no. The thing that is that that needs to be gotten out is the thing that's going to keep you from being blessed. I'm just telling you. So a lot of times when we go into situations, we don't clean up nothing first. We just want people to take us how we are. You gonna deal with me how I am? I'm not compromising. I'm not. I'm not changing. Whatever. And then you wonder why you won't, can't have nothing on the next level. You wonder why you can't uh, walk in the next level of blessings. Cause you don't want to get rid of the stuff that's rooted in you. You don't want to get rid of the junk. You don't want to clean out the mess. So as I'm pulling out these weeds, I'm talking about they had just got out of hand out there. And although when I look out that at it, it was looking right cute because it was greenery. Honey, don't let something, huh, something that look like this is about something mess you up. <laughs> Thank you, Carlitia, this morning. Thank y'all. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Aunt Amanda and Cheryl, everybody. Let me make sure I spoke to everybody. I told you when I get a break, I'm going to speak. Glory to God. Don't let, I'm telling you, don't let folks block your blessing. I don't care. If you go to a place of worship and you worship God and God has not told you to move or whatever, you're going to have to stay rooted. Because that is uh, is also a scripture that states that uh, let the wheat and the wheat, you know, grow together. But let me tell you something. There's going to be a season, though. There's going to be a season when God is going to tell you to pluck up, pluck up, get, get, move move and move now and see a lot of times most of us don't want to move a lot of a lot of times most of us are very comfortable in our raggedy situation very comfortable in our little uh toxic environments very comfortable that's all we know all we know is how to act up all we know is our ghetto ratchet family members that act up sometimes all we know that's all we know so we just sit in that, and then we're saying, Lord, I don't see nothing moving. Lord, I don't see nothing changing. Lord, I don't see you manifesting the blessings that you told me. Lord, I can't see my dreams coming true. Lord, I can't even see my pocket changing. I said, if you want to be around some people who got some money, you're going to have to stop hanging as much around people who don't have none. You might not like that. But there is something that comes with. Let me tell you, even those things are camouflaging. I'm telling you, add something beautiful, something nice, something kind, something ain't really bothering nothing. Honey, something is going on up in the end there. And the devil is not stupid, okay? The devil is not stupid. You hear me? The devil is not stupid. He knows that all I got to do is just keep princes around this group of people because this group of people, all they want to do is this. (laughs) <laughs> and the devil knows that I look long as let's use this big old head again. The devil knows that long as princess don't cut them little edges or whatever, she'll never see growth. <laughs> she'll never see growth. She'll just keep on putting them braids in the house. She'll just keep on uh trying to figure out what, what shape or whatever. The devil is like, you will get cut off today, and I will be cute. I will gonna be cute and gonna do what I got to do. Holding on to stuff. When people take a transformation from natural. Uh, from from perm to natural, some folk don't want to cut off the perm side of it because they be like, well, then it's gonna be real sharp. Well, you the one want to make the move. You the one want to make the transformation. You the one want something to happen different. Well, what's wrong with it being short? What you worried about? You think you are gonna look ugly or something? Like I ask myself, you the one want to change in your life, but you don't want to see. Or do what it takes, excuse me. You don't want to do what it takes to get it done. So as the Holy Spirit was speaking to me out there in that garden, and he had already told me, I told you a year or two ago about the roots of things. Sometimes you can't see everything that is causing suffocation. Sometimes you can't see everything that is stopping you or or, or causing you some uh, issues. Sometimes you can't see everything. But all you got to do is clean up the mess. See, that's the part that's going to blow some of your mind. All you got to do is start cleaning up the mess. If you clean up the mess in the situation where you have some unforgiveness, if you clean up the mess in your marriage, if you start cleaning up the mess with your kids, if you start cleaning up the mess with your finances, if you start cleaning up the mess, come on. I want to help somebody this morning, anybody. It don't matter who. 
Okay. If you start getting to the root of your problem, if you start trying to say, look, I'm damaged, I'm worn, I'm confused, I get sick of people, people get on my nerve. Let me find out why. Because I want to enjoy my life. Everybody ain't bad. Sometimes it's you. Sometimes, sometimes it's you. Truth is hurt. Put, put on the looks. When I realized that Princess is was my main problem. Not not the look, not the problem, but the main one, the majority. I wasn't like the minor part, and I had asked the Holy Ghost to help me today because I want somebody to leave off this live saying I'm about to get this stuff out. I'm about to give because let, let me tell you something. You can deal with other people better with their flaws and all because you're never gonna run into people who are not. Uh, don't have flaws and all. I just thought I'd share that with you. You're never going to run, I'm going to say it again, into people who don't have some issues because we all have issues. So if you think that you can go ahead and get rid of everybody in your life and then that is going to be what's going to make you get to the manifestation, you, 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 um, tricking yourself. Just thought I'd tell you that. Because some of the things that you think are causing you the problem and that the things that are causing you the problem, some of the things that, uh, you think aren't the problem is. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You can talk yourself out of it all you want to. When you get to why is Princess acting like this? Why is Princess uh behaving this way? Why is Princess responding this way? Why is, why is, why? And everything just come back to me? Then let me tell you something. It does not disturb my spirit as much as it used to. You heard me say as much as. Means I'm still going through the process. But it does not disturb my spirit. As much as you do, to, uh, what, what other people be doing. Because this is what I said. I said, why does that get on my nerves so bad? Even when it comes to me and Reggie and stuff that, that irk my nerve, like, um, I don't like certain things. Like, I don't like moody people or whatever. So sometimes my husband is moody. Sometimes I'm moody. But I said, why do I get so mad, mad and been out of shape or whatever? He ain't even saying nothing. He's just making faces. And get what I did. I said, Prince, why is that bothering you so much? Why are you disturbed by that? It ain't bothering them that much. It ain't disturbing them that much. Hey, you ever had to ask yourself that? If you haven't, then praise the Lord. I've had to ask myself that. How come I don't like certain people, but some other people can do the same thing, and then I don't really have a problem with it as much? Check yourself, Prince, before you wreck yourself. So this morning I thought I stopped by to tell y'all that it's some stuff that you're dealing with. It's some unforgiveness that you're harboring or whatever. It's some stuff that you're holding on to. And what it is, it's suffocating. It's suffocating and knocking the life out of stuff. You can't really enjoy your life. When it really ain't your husband. It really not your kids. It's really not the other people that did whatever they did to you. Because let me tell you something. Most of the time, the people that have uh, attacked you or hurt you or whatever, it's something that they deposited that you held on to. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Mm-hmm. You held on to it. Like, I I, I want to be free, and I want to be free indeed. And I'm not going to sit around here and be harboring, the, look, holding weeds and letting them weeds just snatch the life out of my whole entire garden. Listen now, I'm going to speak to somebody. Uh, Why would you let... Something that is damaging soak the life out of your hard work. I don't went out there and dug up that ground. I don't went out there and invested in some black dirt, bags of black dirt. I don't went out there bending over. I'm older now. I don't went out there trying to find, figure out how to get on these knees. They're not the same knees as when they was when I was twenty. Okay. And I'm down there working hard like that. And then I'm going to let some stuff that's, look, that was down, deeply down, rooted in that thing, come up in there and suck out the life of my hard work. The devil is like, I'm going out here. Look, I already did it. I already did it. That's what I said to myself this morning. Past tense. See, I didn't come to y'all live talking about what I'm going to do. I already did it. I was out there early this morning pulling, snatching, getting. I'm talking about pulling. And then realized that some of them had a big old root. Some of that stuff had big old roots. And then some of it just came up real easy. But some of it I had to pull and toss. I'm talking to somebody spiritual. Some of that stuff I had to wrestle with so it could come up out of that garden. Because you coming up out of here. Because I want to see the manifestation of God. I want to see my life be what God called me, called it to be. I want to be what God called me to be. Ain't got time to be playing games out here. 
I said, Princess, what has caused you not to write this next book? What is causing you to be slow about this? You know what the process is. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me and gave me the answer to that. And guess what? I'm on to that. Let, when I tell y'all I'm rolling in this thing right here, I'm rolling in this thing. Because, honey, when I tell you, if you want to live a life, that's right, you can. If you want to be free, you can. You can. You have to ask yourself, what's the cost? What, what's the cost? And am I willing to pay it? I'm going to do that. Swallow that right quick. What is the cost? Think about that. And uh, is it worth? <laughs> I'm saying, and you're going to see it's going to be worth it. It's going to be a little struggle. Some stuff going to be deeply rooted, like I said. And and that's why I took my time today. I was I was trying to rush sometimes, trying to hurry up because I don't want y'all to leave me. And I'll let, just carrying on. Just doing the most. Y'all can look at this video later. Just doing the most. Because I don't want y'all to go nowhere. I know some of y'all at work. Some of y'all in class. So I'll just be trying to talk all fast and get her and get it out. But let me tell you something. Today the Holy Spirit told me, take it. Take it slow. Because today your yoke will be broken. I don't care if it's one. Somebody going to hear this word. And somebody going to say, you know what? I've been sitting here holding and hovering weeds. I've been, come on now, Evangelist Barfield. I've been sitting here housing unforgiveness. I've been sitting here sitting in bondage. Okay? I've been sitting in here not enjoying my life. And I'm blaming everybody. <laughs> everybody. Everybody. It's everybody's fault. And I'm tired of it. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me the stuff that you don't want to get rid of is what's keeping you from your blessings. And I'm not talking about going and get rid of everybody. Everybody want to, when princes do the videos, I get people in my inbox talking about some breaking up and all that. I ain't say, I, I did not say any of that. Did anybody hear me say break up with anyone? If God didn't tell you to go nowhere, don't go nowhere. Okay? I don't care what they look like. He has a plan. He has a purpose. Okay? So I ain't said that. I said, get to the root of you. Get to your problem. Get to the stuff that is clouding your mind. Because you ain't going to be ready for whatever he going to bless you with anyway. If your mind still full of junk. If your heart is still full of mess. If you can't keep your, your mind clear. It's time out for playing. Cheryl, what is the cause you're willing to pay for free? That's what I'm trying to tell y'all. See, when I think about this. Y'all know what I put in my mind? I put in my mind... When I watched that movie about Harriet Tubman, the latest one, and I saw that lady struggling or whatever, and I noticed that everybody wouldn't go with her to help her to free them people. Now, I noticed that people waited on her in certain places, but they would not take the full journey with her. That right there is a word alone. Some folks ain't going to be able to take this journey. You got to do it yourself. And she knew she had been called. She knew that her name was on that assignment. And so what she did, you see what I'm saying? What she did is come up with a plan. And what was crazy about the thing as I began to think about that movie is that I kept saying she was the one that had to keep going back to the place. Get rid of that. To the place that kept her in bondage. That's how you know she was free. She had no problem. She had already been free, right? She had already got out of there. If you ain't watched the movie, go watch it. She had already got out of there for herself, but she knew that her assignment meant that she had to go free somebody else. You know why? Because once you taste freedom, you're going to want some other people to be free. Once you know that it is possible for you to have, that's why God trying to free us up. That's why he's trying to get us where we can write these books and sing these songs and make these CDs and open up these businesses and trust him and try him at his word on whatever assignment he gave. That's why he's doing that. That's why he's doing that. Because when one becomes free, it then says somebody else got to be free too. I want somebody else in my club. I want somebody else to make it in. You won't be worried about what people doing, what people saying. Because you will become free. And then you will want other people. And you will go back to that place where you were broken. That's why I do my lives. That's why I'm transparent. That's why I say what I'm saying. Because I realized that that is the thing that broke the yokes. That is the thing that was deeply rooted in me. That kept me in bondage for so many years. And then I kept on, kept on, kept on, kept on living. Every morning, wake up. And I'm going to tell you this because the Holy Spirit is telling me to tell you this. Because somebody is doing this right now. I would get up in the morning. Dread getting up in the morning. I would put on my clothes. And I would put on my clothes as if I was 
was putting on weight. I promise you. I would get my shirt. And even though it was light like this, honey. I would put it on as if I was putting on bricks. And I would pull up them pants as if I was putting on some weight. And everything about me felt heavy. Everything about me felt like I was overwhelmed and just I'm talking about way down, and I felt like, what's the use? Every morning when I woke up, I'm telling you, and then even with my kids, I would get my kids together. Thank you, Carlita. Thank you this morning. I would get my kids, and I would look at my kids and put their stuff together, and I would be saying, what is the use of all of this? What is the use of all of this? And go sit at the job that I did not like and do what I did not want to do and look around the room at people who I did not want to be around and then say to myself, I said, Princess, this can't be this bad. This cannot, what in the world is going on with you? When I got to the root of the problem, let me tell you something. When I got to the root of the problem, I was not happy with my life. I was not happy with my decisions. I was not happy with some of the mistakes I had made. I was not happy with that stuff. And I said, Lord, how come I'm living in it? And he said, because you have trapped yourself in your mess. You have trapped yourself in your mistakes. You have trapped yourself in your pain. You have rooted that mess on the inside of you. You have placed that mess on the inside of your mind. You have put that in your spirit that nothing going to change. You have spoke all this negativity over you and you are actually living out what you have spoken over your life. I'm telling you today to speak something different. I'm telling you today to ask God to give you the wisdom and the knowledge to climb up out of the bondage. When I tell you, I'm going to show you something in the spiritual realm. When I tell you that when I, the more I start lifting my hands before I put on my clothes, before but look, before I would put that shirt on or whatever, I would wake up and I would say, Lord, I need your spirit. Lord, I need, I would just be begging, begging. I ain't have to beg, but I, I felt like I had to. Begging for your presence. Begging, Lord. I said, please don't leave me. Please, please, please. I'm not going to make it through the day without you. And all of a sudden, when I start putting on them clothes, them clothes don't feel like nothing no more. Glory to God. The, the pain that I was feeling when I recognized why I was feeling it is because I was holding on to it. The unforgiveness, I realized that I had just put myself in such a negative place with all of that. And I felt like God had forgotten about me. Thank you, Cheryl, this morning. I felt like God had forgotten about me. And then he said, you're not free. And so you know why I wake up in the morning and if God give me something to say, I run on this line with my head wrapped, no earrings, no makeup, ain't trying to be cute for it. Because I want you to know that when God sets you free, you'll run to try to help somebody else. When God sets you free, when you taste the taste of freedom, you will run to try to tell somebody else. You won't be trying to hurt nobody else's feelings. You won't be trying to break up nobody else's marriages and, and friendships. You won't be trying. You'll be trying to get somewhere so you can tell somebody about the goodness of Jesus. You will run. I'm talking about run. You won't even worry about what these folks talking about. You will do your life. Eventually, the bar fell. Honey, you go ahead and do what God told you to do. Don't worry about how many people got the thing doing and doing it already. You just going to do what God tell you to do, ma'am. I, I, that's for you. <laughs> that just came. Just going to do it. How he tell you to do it. When he tell you to do it. What he tell you to do. Just do it. And so, and that's the way I'm telling you, get that stuff out of your spirit. Get that stuff out of your spirit. Start tearing up some stuff. Start tearing up some stuff. Come on now, clean up, clean up. It's time to clean up. When you clean up this mess, I'm telling you, I ain't talking about nobody else's house. Get out of other folks' house. I'm talking about yours. And I, I'm, I'm telling you, go, 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 go. I, I need to put this in somebody's spirit right now. Go, go, move, do it, do it, do it, do it. Do it. I want it to be in your brain all day long. I want that word. I don't care if you didn't hear nothing else I said today. Let it go. Let it go. Whatever the thing is, I'm telling you, let it go. Move forward. Get it out. Whatever your words are, you know what you need to do to that situation. You know what you need to do concerning that. Do it. Do it. Work. Work. Come on. Come on. Get it out. Get it out. Okay? Get it on out. Because there is freedom. And the sad part about freedom that the devil don't want us to actually um, hold on to is that it's free. It is free. 
You mean to tell me I can be free? And there's nothing that I will have to pay for? Nothing that I will have to do other than make up my mind that I want to be free? And walk in it? Declare it and decree it? That's all? Really? And somebody said, Princess, that sounds like a lot. It is. It is. But it's worth it. It's worth it. And that's what I came to tell y'all today. Go on in the garden. Go on up in here. And start regulating some things. Go on up in here. And start regulating some things. Okay? Start regulating. If you, if you can't talk no better, don't say nothing. Okay? If you can't act no better, don't act. Don't don't do nothing. Okay? Till you get free. Then you then that way you can rejoice in it. Thank you, Lord, for coming in and helping. Thank you, Tamika. Y'all gone. It's a process, but it's gonna be worth it. Uh the next time y'all see me, my hair going my end gonna be cut. I'm gonna give myself a shape up because I, I want <clears throat> to go somewhere and get it done. But I'm gonna do it myself. <clears throat> because I'm gifted like that. Okay? Let me see what Andrea's saying, then I'm gonna go. Something arose in me weeks ago listening to one of your lives, and I was convicted and should have been done. So I'm moving forward from this day on in Jesus' name. Thank you for confirmation. I will speak the word of God, and I thank you, woman of God, for encouraging, for your courage. God had courage and words. God had been processing me, and you along with a few others have confirmed it. Gone, girl. Gone, girl. I want to see God manifest, that, manifest this stuff in y'all, and I don't want you to be the reason why this stuff doesn't come uh, out and open. Okay? Join me tomorrow night. Um, for my mom and I are going to be talking about when you um have to take care of some people in prison, some family members in prison, some folks that have messed you up, and and you have been locked up, but you feel like you've been locked up because you have um reaped or or, or or been in a situation. Y'all gonna join me? Y'all see what I'm talking about? I'm trying to get off here now. <laughs>